So both Marvel and DC had big announcements last week, and if you ask me, honestly, DC's was more interesting. Marvel really just announced a new team book. Yeah, it's a team book consisting of all female characters, but we've seen that before. DC's announcement is effectively another line-wide reboot, and the end of the New 52 as we know it. So let's take a look at this brave new world we're going to be living in once their two-month Convergence event finally wraps up in June. Now I won't be going over everything because we'll be here all day otherwise, I'm just going to summarize the announcement as a whole and talk about key points that I think are most appealing. Basically what happened was DC announced the end of their line-wide initiative, The New 52. Now continuity isn't getting reset, but about half the books are being cancelled and replaced with new ongoing titles, and the little New 52 logo isn't going to appear on any covers anymore. So I guess this isn't really a reboot as much as it is a rebranding. But a lot of interesting titles came out of this announcement. For example, we're getting two Robin books now. The first is Robin, Son of Batman by artist Patrick Gleason, who will also be handling writing duties. This looks like a standard solo Robin book, except starring Damian Wayne as the title character. Y'all know I'm not particularly a fan of him, but what interests me more is the other Robin book, We Are Robin. This looks like an interesting spin on the concept, and I'm genuinely curious to see what they can do with an army of street Robins. I just hope it's not too much like the cover, where they're just wearing jeans and t-shirts with maybe an R or a yellow shirt tied around their neck to look like a cape. Give me costumes for this one. That'd be cool. Also, put Tim Drake in it, for he is the one true Robin. Also, after years of being drawn like this, Starfire is now going to finally be drawn like this. Still skimpy, yes, but still a lot more skimpy than even her classic George Perez costume, and it keeps more in line with her look on the Teen Titans cartoon show. And she's getting her own ongoing series from Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor, the same team behind the popular Harley Quinn ongoing. So hopefully Starfire goes along the same fun lines as opposed to how she debuted in the New 52. Black Canary is getting her own ongoing series as well from writer Brendan Fletcher, one of the writers behind Hipster Batgirl, and Annie Wu, one of the artists from Matt Fraction's Hawkeye run. Two of the more surprising announcements was a new Prez book by Mark Russell and Ben Caldwell, and Section 8 by Garth Ennis and John McRae. Now, Prez was an old series from the 70s about a teenager who became president. It was as silly and out there as you think it might have been. The kid's name was Prez Richards, for God's sake. All that said, this is the image they released for that series, and as you can see, it doesn't really look like the story of a kid running this country. Unless that girl is Prez and she's looking at a piece of military weaponry. Now Section 8 is actually a spin-off of an old Ennis and McRae series called Hitman from back in the 90s. Hitman was sort of a precursor to Ennis' run on The Punisher, I guess you could say. And it's very underground and has a very cult following. Now granted, Section 8 is only going to be a miniseries, but the fact that they're even bringing it back and with the original creative team is really interesting. It shows that they're taking this concept very seriously. Martian Manhunter is getting his own ongoing again. Dr. Fate is getting his own ongoing again. Cyborg is finally getting his own ongoing. Which is about time because Cyborg has been hyped as one of the most important characters of DC's New 52 initiative. And now that the line is over, we finally get to see what he's made of. Also of note, Midnighter, the first gay male superhero to get his own ongoing in either DC or Marvel. All in all, this looks like a much grander attempt to diversify their lineup and just put out books that don't just star Superman or Batman. Okay, yeah, a lot of the books are still Batman related, but not directly tied to the character. Plus, everything's starting to look a lot less homogenized. Things are finally having a unique look and feel that's different from the Jim Lee house style they've been doing since 2011. So, yeah, I'd say this is a good thing. Keep what worked and then just add a variety of new books. I should note, however, that these are all really superhero-centric, as opposed to when the new 52 launched, when you saw westerns and war books. It was more diversified genre rather than diversified characters, if you know what I mean. I know books like Men of War and G.I. Zombie and All-Star Western weren't exactly popular, but they did add variety. Also, it doesn't look like any alternate versions of DC superheroes that are appearing in Convergence are going to be a part of this new lineup. Like pre 52 Superman or Stephanie Brown Batgirl, Barbara Gordon as Oracle, or White Wally West. After Convergence is over, they don't seem to have a home. Oh, and Jeff Johns will only be writing Justice League, which is weird because he usually does like five books at once. But those are just some observations. I really don't have anything negative to say about this. It looks like they're seriously trying to shake things up for the better. Now if only they shake up DC All Access by adding a new host. Let me know what you guys think of this new lineup down below or anywhere on social media. And as always, like if you like, subscribe if you really like, share this video with your friends. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. The forced connection storyline. This is when the filmmakers decide to force a connection between the protagonist and another character, usually the antagonist, to try and add artificial depth. Like in Batman 89 when they made the Joker kill Bruce Wayne's parents, or in Spider-Man 3 when they made Sandman kill Uncle Ben. 
I've got problems with first person shooters too because the core mechanic of first person shooters, if it's not done well, is that it's a glorified shooting gallery. Right. So if something pops up, you put your crosshairs over it and you hit shoot. Right. That's if it's done really bad. 